your book, uh, The Madness of Crowds, talks about the collapse of grand narratives. Mm -hmm. you know, one of the biggest collapses of grand narratives was religion. Mm -hmm. So I asked Sam whether or not looking back, he believed that his deconstruction of religion was on balance mm -hmm. a net good or a net, mm -hmm. uh, a net negative. What did he say? Uh, he, he managed to evade being too committal either way, uh, I think. But what do you think? <coughs> What's your opinion? Well, I think it's like a lot of things that you deconstruct. Um, you, you only know afterwards whether or not it's something you could have put back together. It's like children with bicycles. They're very fine at taking them apart, very bad at putting them back together. Um, not comparing Sam to a child. But I mean, I just, I think that is, it is something you notice only once you've taken it apart, once you can't reconstruct it. You'd realize what, it, what function it might have performed. Um, I said to Sam on stage a few years ago uh, that I, I thought that it would all be fine if most atheists were as rational and level-headed as Sam, but it's not Sam Harris all the way down. It's like Sam Harris followed by total mentalists <laughs> and um, who just will not reason or rationalize anything and are just screaming harpies of insanity. Yeah. So that's a shame. Um, but yes, I mean, I think that that whole thing works for some people, but obviously doesn't work for others. I mean, religion is, you know, Schopenhauer among others saw it was, um, religion was philosophy for the masses, um, absent religion completely, uh, several, lots of options of what will happen. One is that the, 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 the general public lose the overarching framework of their lives and have nothing to replace it with. And another one is that they do replace it with other things, you know, which are new religions, which crop up all the time. We have the, the religion of the body negativity movement. You know, we have the religion of um, trans, we have the religion of gender, we have the religion of race and, you know, and, and all these things have just stepped into this void. And uh, they're all dogmatic things with their founding texts. Um, they're, they've all got their own, catechisms of a kind priests they have priests they have uh, excommunication rights <clears throat> and i my, my only observation really would be on that is that i preferred the old gods you know i preferred the old priesthood funnily enough uh partly because we knew its flaws and um the sweet point where you see the flaws of religious belief but can still live through it is um is one even I can, well, I can especially feel nostalgic for because yeah. I, I, I don't like the new priesthood. I, I find them um, uh, as corrupt as any priesthood in history uh, with the negative uh, um, attribute that, that not everyone's woken up to them yet, you know. I mean, do we, have, do we have in our culture an equivalent, for instance, of the meme of the pedophile priest? I don't think we do. I mean, for instance, I would love it if the, the sort of, uh, adults who push, you know, gender dysmorphia stuff on children were regarded as the equivalent of pedophile priests. I think that'd be fine. Uh, but my point is, it doesn't come with that yet. It's like the Catholic Church in Boston circa 1950. The priests are still fiddling with the kids, but no one wants to talk about it. So. In other news, this episode is brought to you by Maui Nui Venison. Maui Nui Venison brings the healthiest red meat on the planet direct to your door. Not only is it the most nutrient-dense meat on the planet, they're the only 100% stress-free, wild-harvested venison that you can get. Here's my super secret hack. If you are sick of buying meat that always goes off, put it in the freezer from frozen, salt both sides of it, put it in an air fryer for 10 to 12 minutes each side, and you have a perfectly cooked steak from frozen that will never go off because it's going from freezer to mouth in the space of 25 minutes. It's a complete game changer. All of the cuts are spectacular and you can get them frozen, delivered to your door. But their venison sticks are my favorite while I've been on the road. You can get the healthiest red meat on the planet delivered directly to your door and get 20% off by going to the link in the description below or heading to mauinuivenison.com slash modernwisdom and using the code modernwisdom at checkout. That's M-A-U-I-N-U-I venison.com slash modernwisdom and modernwisdom at checkout. It makes me think, as we were talking earlier on, about uh, some of the ways in which lots of decisions need to be made and you don't know how the outcomes are going to occur, that there are no solutions, only trade-offs, mm. quote. 
I keep coming back to that in my personal life as well, but thinking about what people want to optimize for in their existence, there are no solutions ultimately. Mm. Like, and you have to give up certain things. Uh, you don't have to give up everything. Well, no, there's certainly better solutions, yeah, right? But the world is trying to maximize everything. It's, there is, and it goes back to the uh, shallow pond of empathy mm -hmm. that <clears throat> accepting that trade-offs are an inevitability doesn't fit into that paradigm, right? Okay. It's, we will yeah. always optimize for what is what feels most pleasurable or empathetic in the short term. Okay. I don't know. I don't feel that. Well, that's what the that's how it plays out. I think for a lot of people, yes, if they have no character, if they have no character, indeed. Well, what do you optimize for? I try to optimize for peace. That seems to be the thing that, for me, in my personal life, I try to do. If the price is my sanity, the cost is too high, no matter what it is. And I continually throw that rule out of the window all the time. That's what I try and aim for, right? My own rubric is... I love it, the, the peace in your, in your private life. I, I try. It reminds me of Lady, Lady Bracknell's line about the general at the end of the importance of being earnest. She says, the general was essentially a man of peace, except in his domestic life. <laughs> 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 you're the other way around 